welcome to another episode of Bobby Games Remembers. Because someone had to. Today I'm going to talk about, of course, something that is very important to me, which is the Movie Hero Trilogy. And the Movie Hero Trilogy came out, hard to believe, ten years ago, actually a little more than that now, came out in the spring of 2008. And this was a big step for me, because this was, of course, what defined, you know, my larger productions going forward. And the movie hero, as it was, or is, is, you know, a beloved character of mine. Uh, of course, I can't say it's completely of mine. Full disclaimer here, the movie hero movies I made were based on this movie hero movie, called The Movie Hero. Uh, and this movie focused on somebody named Blake, who was the uh, star of the show, literally. Uh, believed he was in a movie and kind of treated everybody else as roles in his movie. So his therapist he thought was his love interest. It was a shady character in the, on the streets that he thought was the villain. And then he makes friends with somebody who becomes his sidekick. Some of these elements, of course, are familiar to people who have watched my Movie Hero trilogy. All three of you. And, of course, you know, I re-released the Movie Hero trilogy in 2011 when I had to put my channel back up. You know, they are still beloved videos of mine. And... You know, I just wanted to take a second to talk about, you know, the whole thing with the Movie Hero Trilogy, and even kind of the making of it, and some of the things that brought it about. Um, just by chance, I happened to see this movie. Uh, the movie came out in 2004. I saw it, like, on some kind of independent film network in 2008. I mean, it's really random that I even saw it. I think it was one of those deals where we got, like, some film channel for, like, for free for a week or something. It's not even a channel we usually get. And I'm flipping through it, and I see the movie hero was the description for the film, and it's like, you know, so-and-so believes they're in their own movie, and, you know, so I'm watching it, and I'm like, this is actually kind of interesting. I only saw it from, like, the halfway mark to the end, but I was so intrigued by it that I actually, well, I didn't end up buying it that year. I ended up getting it as a birthday gift the following year, and, um... No, I, I did end up seeing it. I forget how I ended up seeing it. I think I DVR'd it or something, but I, I saw the movie, and I was so intrigued by it that I'm like, you know, I kind of want to make my own movie of it. So I made the movie hero, the original one, uh, I believe it was in February of 2008. And it's kind of interesting because this was not meant to be a trilogy. The movie hero movie that I made was meant to be just kind of a quick reference to the movie, really not too much stuck around from the original movie. The original movie hero was actually a little heartfelt, it had some funny moments, but not like ha-ha funny. And then it had, of course, just some really, like, deep revelations and things. I'm not really going to get into it. I'm not going to... I'm also not going to say it's, like, the deepest movie ever made. But, I mean, it, it was surprisingly, like, well thought out for what it was. And, you know, my movie kind of borrows from that. It's Maxine again. I told you, if the rash gets worse, then you've got an STD, but it hasn't been three days yet. Okay, so maybe not, but um, I, I did like the uh, aspect of everybody having different roles in your life, you know, the sidekick, the villain, all these different people who, you know, you think of in a way, one way or another, so I mean, I kept those themes really strongly for the movie. And of course, what I'm wearing now is the hero jersey, this was not anything in the movie, he doesn't, he doesn't always wear the same outfit in that movie, but I just, I don't know, I've always liked this shirt, I could go into a whole rant on the shirt, but I'm not going to, because it's, it's a freaking shirt, but, um... Now, the hero jersey, as it was, would appear in the every Movie Hero movie I've made, and then since then, in the blockbusted films, Movie Hero always wears this shirt. So, I've had this shirt for a long time, actually. This shirt goes back to 2005. Oh, crap, I'm doing a rant about the shirt. You, but you want to know what I've been wondering? What? Why do you always wear that same stupid shirt? This is my hero jersey. This is how the audience identifies with me. Me... Me not wearing this would be like Superman not wearing the S on his chest. Like Captain America without the Stars and Stripes shield. Yeah, sorry I asked. Anyway, I finished the first Movie Hero film. It was just a short, like, 20-minute thing. Broken up into two parts on YouTube because of reasons. And um, it just featured a really quick introduction to my character. Me chasing after the movie villain, one of the first scenes from the actual film. And then me recruiting my sidekick, which I did completely differently from the actual film. My sidekick, of course, being played by John, and uh, he lent his own kind of talents, I guess you could call it, to the film. And then it culminated with a final battle, which would become a running joke for the series. It had a battle with my villain, portrayed by Dane, who um, turns out really was a villain. Also kind of like the real movie. So that was kind of the thing. And there's a scene at the end of the original movie, Hero. Haven't you heard of sequels? I guess we're going! And then that was supposed to tease a sequel, but I didn't really plan a sequel. I kind of liked it as it was, just a silly little 20-minute movie. And then something very interesting happened, and I, I might have talked about this in a previous rant. I know it's referenced in Blockbuster 3, but 
Marine Mayhem happened. Uh, Marine Mayhem was a completely unrelated film series that I made at Avery Point. And, you know, I kind of wanted that to go out with a bang with Marine Mayhem 5. And had I made that movie, I think I would have been, at least for the time being, satisfied. I'm sure I would have eventually made some other movie. But that didn't go so well, as many of you know. And um, Marine Mayhem 5 never actually happened. Marine Mayhem 4 did, but Marine Mayhem 5 was stopped by the police. Yes, I'm not kidding. Uh, I guess when I say it like that, it sounds a lot worse than it actually is. It was really just campus police, and they just kind of told us to cut it out. But anyway, um, because of that, you know, I'm like, well, I still want to make something. Like, I, you know, I was getting really enthusiastic about making movies at that point. So, the Movie Hero 2 was born. And from there, I kind of had a story arc to make the Movie Hero 3. But the Movie Hero 2, still one of my favorite movies that I've ever made. I actually went back and rewatched it recently. And there's just something about it. It's just, it's very playful. It's just kind of... There really isn't much of a plot that was originally supposed to be a little more ambitious with the whole finding clues thing. Originally, the plan was to have, you know, like, John and I travel all these different places looking for clues about the movie villain, but... I don't know. The movie's actually a pretty good length as it is. It's about a 40-minute film, and I thought for what it is, there's a lot of humor in there, and there's a lot of just randomness, a lot of cliches from other action movies and other movies in general... So I really liked it for what it was, and it ended up being basically a string of final battles, which we even joke about in the movie. It looks like this is going to be the final battle after all. Are yeah, you sure? Because you said that like four times, and quite frankly, I'm getting a little bit nauseous from all the traveling, and I just feel like the, the turd and the... the it's got absolutely a positive. And, yeah, like the movie Hero 2 to me... I mean, for that time, not having an HD camera, not having a lot of editing technology, I think that turned out great. I really do. Um, it's really funny. And a little fun fact about, you know, other things going on during the time of that movie. Like, people at Avery Point, which is where I went to college, people at Avery Point actually really liked the movie. Uh, it was kind of this thing. I released part one of Movie Hero 2 years ago, and then I, it took me, like, another few weeks to get the other three parts of it out because we had to film it at other locations. So there was actually kind of a weird demand for the rest of the movie. It was like, oh, we want to see more of this. And, like, people were, like, quoting things from it. But, you know, that was probably the height of my popularity, and it wasn't even that popular. But the movie Hero 2 was fantastic. I, I ended movie Hero 2, much like the first one, with kind of a cliffhanger that the movie villain survived. And sure enough, he did. Now, as, a, as you can already tell, I've taken a lot of liberties with these movies. They're not at all like the original movie, other than a few character names. So my movie villain was a lot more like a real villain and a lot more just kind of crazy than the villain in the actual movie hero movie. So movie hero 3, he comes back. And I, I mean, I'm not going to just summarize every movie because you can watch them on YouTube, although none of you have. But movie hero 3 was supposed to be like my even bigger ambition project. Like, you know, I was trying to get more people on board, more locations, filmed it at Harkness Park and a few other places. And it was... It both was and wasn't, like, a really good movie. I think when I watched Movie Hero 3 after watching Movie Hero 2, it was a little bit evident that well, while Movie Hero 2 kind of just poked fun at itself, like, it was kind of like, yeah, this isn't a very good movie and we know it. Movie Hero 3 tried to be a really good movie, but it really wasn't. And, and that's okay, but it just kind of felt like there were supposed to be all these characters introduced, like the villain Dayblade. Dayblade, I'm assuming? Well, how's this? And I mean, much like all like third movies in a trilogy, I think it tried to do a little too much, introducing the new villain to kind of go along with Dane's main villain. And then I introduced the love interest because that was something that I hadn't done in either of the previous entries. So I figured the love interest in the movie Hero movie was like a significant part of the story, so I wanted to have her in it. And of course, much like everything else, she's not really done to that great of effect. She's just kind of a random girl that I fall for. Like, there's really not much there. Even we go on a couple dates, sort of, and it's just kind of... She's just kind of there to be there. And then, of course, she gets kidnapped, because I can't think of any original tropes. So she gets kidnapped, and I have to save her. And then, you know, like... And I guess in a sort of twist for me, the other villain, Dayblade, ends up teaming up with us to take down the movie villain, and it turns into this just ridiculous three-on-one battle that, again, didn't turn out at all like how I planned it. I mean... My, my budget was extremely low, and I did these, like, really cheesy green lasers and just all this stuff, and I even incorporated a Chaos Emerald in there, because I always have to reference something Sonic or something. So it was an interesting movie. I mean, I don't hate it, but, um, yeah. Hey, uh, yeah, so I was trying to think of ideas for the movie Year 3, you know. After all the stuff we've done, I just can't seem to think anything i've been i've even been researching i've been watching the 
third parts of movie trilogies, which usually aren't that good. Okay, so maybe I didn't do that, but I played Guitar Hero 3. That's almost the same thing. And, of course, I mentioned the uh, re-releasing the movies in 2011. Now, in 2008 and onward, they actually had a pretty good number of views. Uh, movie Hero 1 and 2 got about 500 to 600 views, and the Movie Hero 3 didn't do quite as well, but um, I, I digress. When I put them back on YouTube in 2011, they just haven't done anything for views. Which gets me to my next point, which is that I'm going to be re-releasing all three movies, not broken up into parts, actually the full movie. So Movie Hero 1 will be uh, 20 minutes long, Movie Hero 2 is about 40 minutes, and then I think Movie Hero 3 is about 45 minutes or so. So all three movies will be back on YouTube, uh, not in parts, and with the 16x9 widescreen, which really isn't going to do a whole lot. There's only so much I can do for things that were filmed on VHS tape. But um, I'm actually excited about that. I'm excited to see the movies in their full length and, you know, with all the stuff already in them and everything. And um, I've actually debated releasing them all as one big movie called The Movie Hero Complete, which I might still do. That would be like a 90-minute clip or so if I take out all the credits and everything. So we'll see. Now, two years after the Movie Hero trilogy, I did release a fourth installment called Movie Hero Forever, but I'm not going to talk about that right now. Although that was also a significant story in my history, but... Anyway, hope I've uh, at least somewhat interested you on some of my origins and filmmaking and my first big YouTube production, if you will. And um, if you want to check them out now, you can. The Movie Hero 1 through 3 are all on YouTube. Uh, Movie Hero 2 is four parts. Movie Hero 3 is five parts. And the first Movie Hero is just the two parts. Uh, they all start with me, like, talking right at the camera to introduce the film. And, yeah, I mean, other than that, I kind of described it all for you. But there are some really funny moments in there. First two really weren't scripted at all, other than, like, what was supposed to happen. There was no script, so John and I kind of just improv most of the lines. Movie Hero 3 had a script, but we do go off it quite a bit. But yeah, that's uh, the Movie Hero trilogy. Um, like I said, 2018 is going to be kind of a lot of stuff remembering other things, because this is a big year for me for a lot of reasons, and there's going to be a lot of anniversary-type remembrances, so... Hope you enjoy those. You know, of course, it's not just about looking to the past, but the future. So who knows what the future may hold for Bi Productions. But for right now, I'm just going to remember an old classic. I love cocking this revolver. When they say that a hero can save us. I'm not going to stand here and wait. I'll hold on to the wings of the eagles. Watch as we go.